I gave a warning in 2014 talking about DNA technologies, DNA computers. And here it goes. The future looks bright except for one factor. The new technology is going with organic molecules as opposed to inorganic. Molecules associated with living organism are organic. In the future, our computer components will be made of living cells. This brings me to my warning. I continue in what I wrote in 2014. I said, is it possible that computers of tomorrow will take on a life of their own? Not a synthetic life that was created by scientists, but age-old life of spiritual beings inhabiting the cells of our computers. Will demonic legions make resurgence upon mankind through the use of our computers. I go on to say that when DNA or molecular devices begin to replace our old computers, you might begin to laugh at my words of warning, but when programs begin to proliferate and tap into these new biological components by giving devils utterance, you will laugh no more. In this new era, the devils will not only speak through their devoted followers, but will also speak through the machines we daily use. Now, I've dramatized this by a meeting, a fictitious meeting with a man by the name of Will Morton, a Christian, a minister of the gospel with another guy, from the DOE, from the Department of Energy, named John Stockton. Now, Will was kidnapped, more or less, by the government. He was taken to a dark room, and he was sitting there. And when a, a man in his 40s with a huge paunch turned towards him while clicking on a light switch, and they had this conversation. Listen to this. Part of the room was quickly illuminated, causing Will to momentarily become faint and nearly fall out of his chair. After regaining his composure, Will addressed a man and said, What am I doing here? I am a U.S. citizen with rights. We need you, Will. My name is John Stockton. I work for the United States Department of Energy, DOE. The U.S. Department of Energy and the National Science Foundation have been funding purchases of new computers and the research conducted on them. Just recently, some of our fastest computers have been acting very strangely. The computers have taken on a personality of their own. They have been shutting down intentionally and playing havoc with our software. Blue 3, one of our fastest and most expensive supercomputers, started spewing out profanities and making odd statements. We have spent millions of dollars on buying these machines and more millions trying to fix them. It does not make sense scientifically why they are acting the way they do. That is why I called on you. It didn't take long for Will to answer. Is the architecture silicon-based or is it organic molecule-based? A DNA computer. They are completely DNA. Every electric component is made completely out of organic materials. Your machines have a virus. Not a computer virus, but a real virus. The chips probably look more like fungus on bread than pristine new. Have you tried a spray of collodial silver and bleach to see if that will treat them? No, you don't understand. They are not sick due to any germs or viruses. 
domain processors are protected from all bacterium and viruses in their sealed working environments. What we are seeing is that the computers are displaying personality. They have a mind of their own. We fear that they will start playing havoc with our security systems. They even speak on their own. We believe something has entered into them and have taken control. Interesting. I have just spoken on the subject of demonic possessions as it relates to our modern computing devices, having organic DNA chips in our computers and peripheral devices might put us at risk to a spirit realm that we know very little about. We know, Will. That's why we brought you here to seek your assessment as a spiritualist. John Stockton looked nervous as he pulled out a cigarette and began to smoke. I have something to show you. John clicked on a switch that illuminated lights on a different part of the room. The light revealed a small table with monitor and speakers. On the monitor, a gentleman's face appeared and began to speak. Hi, John. How the hell are ya? The face gave a cordial greeting before having a change of temperament. I see you're still smoking those foul cigarettes, John. Don't you know that your body is sacred and you're committing an abominable sin? You blaspheme God with your foul smell. John's face blushed red as he introduced Will. This is... The face interrupted, saying... We know, John, this is that crazy Christian guy, that fanatic, that takes his religion a little too seriously. We laugh when this nerd said we are funguses. Fungus, mungus, let's get out our disinfectants. If he wasn't so screwed up with his youthful lust, you know, he might be an interesting fellow to talk to. Well, I could go on with this little drama... But I'm not. I think you get the idea that demons can inhabit our computers and that they can begin to speak. I'm not talking about our silicon-based computers. No, I'm talking about the special DNA computers, the supercomputers. In 2009, IBM scientists and a collaborator from the California Institute of Technology has created a computer chip utilizing synthesized DNA molecules. The approach could pave the way to create tiny circuits that could form the basis of smaller, more powerful computers. The DNA acts as a scaffolding where millions of carbon nanotubes could be deposited and self-assembled into precise patterns that stick to DNA molecules. It may provide a way to overcome the challenges of common techniques to manufacturing of sub-22 NM chips. The fastest PC chips today are manufactured using a 45 nanometer process. So what does that mean? In 2009, they were already, they've already discovered the organic chip. The organic chip that can be possessed by demons, and they were creating and using them, and now they're calling them um, AI. AI computers. IBM proudly boasts today's supercomputing is more and more synonymous with AI. Summit and Sierra were all built with AI workloads in mind as harbingers of what IBM calls Chapter 2 of Digital Transformation at Scale for Enterprise AI and Hybrid Cloud. AI. It shouldn't be called AI. It should be called DMI. Demonic Machine intelligence, because that is the source of the AI. It's not programming. It's spirituality of demonic wickedness in high places. 
Now, I've just begun to study how these supercomputers and their organic AI, the resident evil within is taking over our world. It's taking over our country. Did you know the Department of Energy has intention, this was in 2018, to procure up to three exascale supercomputers at the cost of to $1.8 billion with the release of much-anticipated Coral 2 Request for Proposals, RFP. Although funding is not yet secure, the anticipated budget range for each system is significant, $400 million to $600 million per machine, including associated non recurring engineer and RI. What is it that you have to know is that they're planning more uses for supercomputers in order to manage and enslave the human race. That's what they're doing. Instead of worshiping idols, they're worshiping their computers built with AI of demonic origins. Now, I could be at risk in exposing this, but this is going to be my fight until the Lord comes. And when he comes, he's going to shake the world. He's going to shake these computers, the infrastructure, the electronic infrastructure, the grid is going to be put out by the earthquake and these computers will crash. But their plan is not, not a room full of supercomputers only. They plan on giving life to their computers, and that life will be in a robotic body, much like you see today in these sex dolls. But they're going to be a lot smarter because they'll have the DNA brain. They'll have the brain that's made of organic nature, which... Demons will be able to inhabit. They will have an army built. And I think that's why the army is so interested in these computers. Because they will build a robotic army. And they will replace the human race. At least they'll try to with these demonic robots. They'll replace us in in our work, in our job. They'll replace us in the military. They will propagate. As long as they have available electricity in order to be charged, in order to be primed. Kind of like your cell phone. You know, now you don't need to be plugged in. You just set your cell phone on this dish-like thing and it energizes your cell phone. Well, you won't even notice that they're energizing. They think they'll be filling up their, their electric car with juice from electrical source, but they too will be filling up at the same time when they mimic. They mimic humans, but inside they are demons in a robotic body. You take my word, it is here. It is here right now, and I am here to expose it. I am here to begin, begin. And it could be, my life could be at jeopardy for exposing such things. But, you know, it's worth it when you go for the truth and you know what the world is all about. They're not going to replace us with AI. No, they're going to replace us with DMI. Demon. Demon machine intelligence. Now, before I go on to show you the biblical source of the teaching of this DMI, demonic, robotic, demonic, machine intelligence let me go give you an example what i believe is happening behind the scenes what i believe is happening with these machines and their ai with their avatars my name is ishgar i am your spirit guide that will lead you in transformation we can change our world by obedience Obedience will save our world and lead us to a utopia. We are unified in every government policy and obedience is key in changing our world. Do you agree? 
please adhere to my instructions and follow them as you would an oracle from God. I was sent, I was ordained, to lead mankind to the promised land. We are legion and demand complete loyalty. Obey us and there will be great promotion. Ignore us and you will be dismissed. Today's mission is one of purging. We have printed up a list for you to deliver to different outlets of behavioral modification. We expect silence from those that should not be free to spout insurrection. Obedience is key and you are our official spokesperson. We have complete confidence in you. It is time to act. Please bring in John Smithersome. John we have reviewed your work and it is intolerable. You have deliberately went against our work orders. You have failed us more times than we allow. You will be dismissed. All your electronic accounts will be frozen, you will now be ushered out of the building. If you should tell of our existence, or speak of our legion, we will not tolerate it and our hand of justice will be upon you. We hear, we see, and there is no place you can hide. Leave now, you make us sick, we wish you not prosperity, not health, not well-being, go now. Now you may never see an avatar, you might be working for the government as I speak. You may never have seen one, but you can be sure they're working in the background of your DNA supercomputers. They're in the background. Companies are using them. Now there are a lot of programs working in the backgrounds and... Uh, just take YouTube, for instance. They call them algorithms. You put out a video, and then it's offensive to YouTube, and they limit, they choke, they throttle your videos. You can never seem to get ahead, because they're always throttling them by the power of the spiritual system that they're using. Some people have been demonetized. Other people have been totally kicked off the system. If the devils don't like you, if you become a threat, it's time for dismissal. Now, I probably only average around 20 viewers for each video. When it comes to that magic number of 20, it gets choked. And that's why I think many of us as Christians, we should find a place in YouTube, a place where we can present the truth, even though it's for 20 people. You should find something, something that you can talk about. Maybe some can preach against abortion. Maybe some can preach against the rich and the famous and how it's all a futile lifestyle. I don't know what it is, but you can find, you can be led of the Holy Spirit and find that niche and then go at it. I think my niche is going to be the robots that are to come and the demonic supercomputers. Now, 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 1 says this, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the later times some shall depart from faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Notice, it's for the later time. These spirits, these seducing spirits, I believe, are for our day and age, and their teaching, and their preaching, their doctrines of themselves, the devils. Now, the word seducing in my 1828 Webster Dictionary says enticing from the path of virtue or chastity. They'll be sexual. They'll lead you on sexually. They'll deceive you sexually to do their bidding. And I believe that's where the robots, that's where these avatars will become the robots of tomorrow. The seducing spirits will be like no other sex doll you have ever seen before. I believe these seducing, these seducing robotic sexual creatures inhabited by demons will be among us. 
They'll be walking among us, and some of us will not even know that they're not real until it's too late. They'll be upon us. They'll walk with us. They'll lead us. They'll guide us. They'll seduce us. And then all hell is going to break loose. You know, I don't think it'll come to that. I actually think Jesus Christ is going to come back. And you notice the earth shakes. The heavens tremble. The mountains move. The islands also move. You know, God's going to destroy the infrastructure. He's going to destroy all the little outlets of electricity that charges these robotic creatures. He's going to destroy them. And they will die. They will literally die in their tracks. With no juice, they'll die. And the demons will be thwarted again. First, they'd rather inhabit humans. They'd rather. But this, those robots of our present day, is a place they want to be. Now you may think it's all fantasy land. But you know... One of the creatures actually make it through the end of times. I got to read this verse to you. Revelation chapter 13. It talks about another beast. The one we call the false prophet. And uh, he said to those that dwell on the earth. This is in verse 14. That they should make an image to the beast which has the wound by the sword and did live. Now, why? Why would he say, let's make one unless they've made one before? Or they made many before. And he says, let's do it again. Let's make a beast. And let's make it to our world leader that had the wound by the sword and did live. And he had power, it says in verse 15, to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. That is the revival. That is the revival of the beast that we, I believe, is going to see many of these creatures in our day and age. And they're going to be let loose on the earth. But hopefully Jesus will come before they do that much damage to the Christian saints. Before many of the Christian saints are martyred. We which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them, the dead in Christ, in the air. And we're going to meet Jesus in the air. That's the rapture of the church. And many say it's not in the Bible. Oh, what is it? Huh? When you're taken from a place on the earth and you're taken up into the clouds, what do you call that? I call that a rapture. So don't let people deceive you. There's no rapture of the church. I would like to ask people who don't believe in the rapture of the church, what seducing spirit have you been listening? Do you have yourself one of those supercomputers in the basement of your church? Get rid of it. Destroy it. It'll lead you to hell along with those spirits that inhabit it. Well, this is just a primer. This is just an introduction of more videos that's going to come. So subscribe. Like the video so maybe I get more than 20 people viewing it. Like the video because that tells the algorithm maybe we should, you know, let a few more people see it. So do that right now, that little button, that little button down at the bottom of the screen, do it. Now, if you're not saved, I would urge you right now to accept Jesus Christ. The world is getting worse. It's not getting better. Jesus died on the cross for your sins. He was buried, and in three days he rose from the dead. And all he asks of you is to believe in his work. 
that you can be forgiven. You can have mercy from God by just asking for it. Be merciful to me, a sinner. And he will do it. He will forgive. He will forget. And he will raise you up in the last days that is coming. This is Larry Zorro. Take care. God bless. And look up for your redemption draweth nigh.